Bad. <laughs> love it, I love it. I have I never know. known that a fish can make that sound. <laughs> I, did, I don't think anyone really did until that video came out. Four. As your lighthouse is okay. I mean, base stations. <laughs> my, my lighthouse is okay? <laughs> yeah, my lighthouse is okay. <laughs> <laughs> Three. You sound good, Diffuse. It's very, mm. very yes. full bodied. I like your voice. <clears throat> Full body. Thank you. That's actually like I wa like Thank watching you. your stream. I won't lie. I like how you talk. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Yeah. Noise. <laughs> yeah. It's like oh. Hi. You're too sweet. I swear. Hello. You say hello to my little friend. <laughs> he. <laughs> He's dying over there. <laughs> No F given. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back oh, to Top Dice. As you know, here's stream. I'm here. And there's our hey. little devil whiplash. Yeah, the we also have someone last else. Week. <laughs> oh, actually, before, explain why you couldn't. Work. That's all I can say, work. Yeah. They just randomly called him at the last minute. But we're not alone today. We actually have a special guest. You want to introduce yourself? <laughs> I mean, do I have to? Okay, that's fine. I can come in. That's cool. <laughs> uh, but yes, I am Diffuse Moose. Uh, as many people, are, well, not many, maybe like two people out there on the internet know, uh, I'm a variety streamer <laughs> <laughs> on Twitch.tv. Um, I've been streaming now for probably like around, what, four years, something like that. I've also been working in the game industry for going on, I think, what, February will be 19 years. It's hard to believe. So, um, but that's me, and I, I really appreciate you all having me here. It's it's a, honestly an honor. So, thank you very much. Aw, uh, we're uh, welcome. Yeah. We're actually more honored for you to be on this show. <laughs> yeah. Full stop. Get your stuff comfortable, heavy sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go. By the way, interesting fact that most people don't know: when me, uh, Whiplash, and and Colton, and we actually were on a panel together. On FWA, if you yeah. didn't know. Uh, we were. That's, yeah, but this was like an unofficial episode of Top Dogs. Oh, no, even this wasn't even. This was like the original end life version. <laughs> but this was us getting a. So we could say this was a test uh, panel to really get us ready for what this is. And I it's funny, say. actually. It's funny because, like, since it was mine and Fiction's first time being in front of people, which was completely obvious, <laughs> I was getting into it and talking way too much. And Fiction, yours, was, your statements were a little short. And the fuse was like yes. showing us both up. He was like, "I know what I'm doing here." Yeah. <laughs> no. Now, no. no, but honestly, no, think, you were amazing in that panel. I don't think we're sitting up at, at your level yet because you know we still have much improvements to make on, and we have improved though. This is not that hard. Oh, we have. I'm not like like nervous to get in front of people anymore. Like when we were at BLFC, like Colton could already see that. That what you would say? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, Diffuse. Now, I want to ask you, uh, um, why the moose? Is there a story really behind good. it? Yeah, I, okay, do you want the short or long answer? <laughs> well, it depends um, on what's comfortable for you. It doesn't matter. I mean, okay, so I was actually, I got into the furry fandom back in, like, the early mid-90s, because I'm just that old. Um, and I kept it very, very, very hidden from a lot of people. And uh, for a while there, I kind of just stopped really getting involved at all, like, outside of drawing some Anthro characters and stuff like that. Um, but eventually I got into, to, to, like, doing cosplay and stuff like that. And um, I wanted to, like, create my own, like, at the time, it was, like, a Facebook page or whatever, Facebook, like, creators page. And um, I needed, like, a name for it, you know? And... It's not as like fancy as like oh let me let me look at every Sona and you know what's what's a good fit for me. I just picked one based off of my last name and went with it. And phonetically, Moose is part of my last name, so I got 
lucky in a way that I feel like a lot of the characteristics of a moose do fit me very, very well. Like I'm usually pretty easy going when you back me in a corner and we're gonna have some problems you know what i mean but uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> but like yeah, for sure. instance yeah i mean like and i think that a lot of people look at moose as more of like a i don't want to say imposing but it, compared to like a you know like a deer sona or something like that uh i, I couldn't see myself being a deer sona or anything so it just everything kind of just worked out you know the way and uh yeah so i wanted i wanted something that would kind of after learning things through one of my friends who also got me but this is really really good in my opinion um if you have a different name across multiple platforms i think we even talked about this at the at the panel um but we did yes try try to unite your name and have the same name across everywhere because it makes it a lot easier to find you and like i, I wanted something that was Those. recognizable yeah and i'm like what else what also kind of like hopefully rolls off the tongue a little bit that like rhymes so i looked up different words that rhyme with moose which are very very few <laughs> i've learned and diffuse meant to be spread out like the moose caboose not centralized <laughs> caboose. yeah we, got, we do have the moose caboose yeah that's true that's true i kind of um, did something similar with uh my whole tiktok my first account was stream arcanine it got banned because i triggered safety measures with work vpns and stuff so i s switched to arcadad uh, because of my comment really. section. And then I realized, okay, I'm starting to like rebuild myself up. I'm like, I gotta make sure what, like you just said, things need to line up. So I changed my Telegram, my Discord, my Twitter, like everything changed to match the name. So I think it's a very good point for anyone out there that has multiple names and wants to start building some rep. It's good that your name matches everywhere. So if they don't have direct link, they can uh, kind of guess what the link is, the, the URL for the webpage. And it's easier like that. Pretty yes, same here. My same name man. is pretty much the same across everything, except in VR chat. I left out two numbers in my VR chat name because I only give that oh, out to people I actually do talk to. Oh yeah. Well, that, one like, of them uh, said two numbers. The, <laughs> but, but there are cases like I've, I've seen people who you know, if you achieve a, a certain level of dare I say fame, you know, with, even with, you know, within the fandom. And you don't want people finding you like your telegram for instance i know people who just they don't they don't have their name is nothing like what you'd find on their like stream accounts and stuff like that like it's just different so they can maintain their their privacy so yeah True. no which is understandable and honestly uh, i'm gonna say if someone finds me messages me the chance of me texting them back that same day is gonna be next to nothing because i have <laughs> i am so bad at getting back with people I'm like my discord and telegram is like an archive of unread messages Oh, boy. <laughs> I feel you on that. Yeah, a lot of us. It, do. it gets quiet on my do. end as well. It's oh, kind of yeah. hard mm -hmm. to keep up sometimes. I'm I'm very busy IRL, and I like spending time. Like somebody texts me, "Hello, how you're doing?" I don't have time for this. But if you ask me a like direct question, like how do I do this, yeah. then I'll answer you. But casual conversation, most of the time, I don't have time for it. I wish I did. I don't. But yeah, I feel like, that sometimes. What you do, like, we spend for our team community chat, I usually actually try to pop in there at least once every day, you know, yeah. interact with people. And in my Discord server, I also try to, you know, pop in there a couple times a day since I'm, like, the owner of it, so I have to, like, keep interaction with people. So, at least try to keep that, that, that up. Yeah. Oh, now I wanted to ask. <laughs> so, what is it like to have Lil Nas X, the new president of League of Legends? It's been great, you know. Uh, I actually didn't know about it. Uh, they just came up and like, here's a gold desk, a gold chair, wow. and uh, I got, I got, I got a, I got a, like a red phone they put, you know, with his anthem. That was kind of weird, mm -hmm. but uh, it's pretty great. It's been pretty great so far. Lots, lots of bling. I still can't tell if the gold is real or not yet. I might try and pawn it uh, this week <laughs> and see, see what happens, you know. See, so, yeah, maybe you can get back. Okay. I am so far behind. What a little Nas do now? <laughs> <laughs> I just found out about it too this, this past week. <laughs> but did you know? Did you know Lil Nas X stole my my son? You can find it on Twitter. Why he stole your husky son? <laughs> yeah, he stole my husky yeah. son. Yes, he did. <laughs> I want my baby back. Thank you. <laughs> if you're watching oh, Lil Nas X. I mean, the biggest thing is, I love like every time, anytime you see him on Twitter, it's like it seems to keep going into like the furry category, and I'm just here for it. Yeah, yeah I'm here for it too. I mean, I mean, I'm he's a, embracing I'm a, like, everything. Oh yeah, I, 
I'm just I'm just expecting one day he's going to commission someone and I'm gonna have to be hush hush about it and then he's going to come out as <laughs> Alright, let's see That'd be great. what kid Okay and all honestly we already know like the most to be heard the games for Sona is Foxes. <laughs> oh my God. This is how I see it. Yeah. But I feel like Lil Nas X will be something else. Okay, <laughs> message for Lil Nas X. Please don't be a fox. Please don't be a fox. You can be anything you want, just don't be a fox. <laughs> You'll start with a bad <laughs> rap. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he could probably make an album about furries if he wanted to. Oh my god, yeah, he could have. Did, did he also, did he buy like a, a fursuit or something like that at one point? Like a, like a, yeah, a very cheap one? I remember some, yeah, yeah, okay, that was, that was it, that, okay, that was him? I remember someone like really better, but that's okay. Yeah. Wait, uh, yeah, that, yeah. what was that thing he said he was, uh, wanted people to come in fursuits, like in their heads and stuff, and he did, and then he took pictures of it and posted it on his Twitter account? That's what that was, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, oh it God. was like a wish version of that. It was that it was bad. I don't think Lil Nas knew that, but it's okay. <laughs> no, honestly, if he wanted to, he probably could just go find someone and commission them. Like, there's plenty of people out there for commission first is from. Yeah. Oh. oh. For, they, yeah. They trip over themselves to to uh, commission get his commission. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, Lil Nas. Yeah. Oh God. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. So, for sure. Um, so, uh, so not only you play games, but you work on them too. What are some of your duties and responsibility as a senior UI artist? Oh boy. Um, yeah. So as, as a heads up there, if you guys don't know, uh, the, the reason why I know you guys asked that question, I do work at Riot Games and I work on Valorant as a senior UI artist. Um, so I'd say that the responsibilities vary from studio to studio i mean i'm talking you know it just depends this this studio at riot we are we we have ramped up a lot more this is the most amount of ui artists slash visual designers the, 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 term, the terms are like interchangeable honestly depending on where you go okay but this is the, the largest team i've ever worked on um so my job is definitely i'd say more specific now than like ever before so i work mainly on the progression team so like you know a lot of the, the front end stuff um i'm working on a new feature i can't talk about but you know like i've, I've worked yeah, on like the yeah like yeah i mean but like the arsenal screen um and uh i even worked on some in-game stuff like some of the kill banners like when you get the uh the kills and you get like the one two three four five you know and the, the ace and all that kind of stuff worked on some of that stuff um but but like a day-to-day -day is you know like you go to like your stand-up meeting and kind of report on what you're working on um, any kind of like blockers from you know whether it's engineering design that kind of thing um you also work very closely with usually at least one ux designer at a time um sometimes if you're working on multiple projects or features uh you gotta you know report to all those different ux people a lot a lot of documentation where i'm working right now that wasn't always the case throughout my career but uh, a lot of documentation to go through it gets a little bit exhausting and i can't even keep up it's kind of like what you guys are talking about too with like telegram um we use slack at work and it's just like i think riot is known to have like the most slack channels out of any company out there in the world it's it's mm -hmm. actually insane um so I, I can't keep up between that and emails i'm like i, I just kind of at times put horse blinders on and get my job done um but the actual work that i do i can do anything from i haven't done as much i like icon icon work as much over the years, the past couple of years, which I'm okay with. I'm not. Icons are one of the most difficult things that you can do and like get good at, in my opinion, uh, with this job. So if you're really good at making solid and really cool looking icons, I think it'd be, you know, really in demand. So work on your icons if you're getting into UI art. Um, they're, of course, just design principles you should always look into. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I mostly work on like screen layouts and coming up with, with concepts for what new features might look like, but also implementation when it comes time to it. So it's not just I, because some artists can do this where they're, they're doing just conceptualization and um, they'll throw it kind of, as I say, they throw it over the fence to like engineering or someone else to totally get everything implemented into the game. Um, I'm not super, super technical, but, and the engineers do help me, the, the programmers help me to get things in the game but then it's up to me to like make sure the layout matches the the concept work on animation effects and stuff like that so um 
yeah, that's without going into like more boring detail. That's that's the, the gist. That's fine. Of kind of what I, I do. Like, I know. Thing. I know. I'll say them for sure. There are some people out there who don't listen to you know the, what you consider the boring side of the details, but you know they would like to know more about it. But sure. that's fine if you don't want to. <laughs> oh well. No, I mean that, is... that's a. Th- oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, oh no! Oh no! I just realized what just happened. I think it'll be all right. He'll just uh, he'll take care of the floor for us. <laughs> oh, oh, there he's back. <laughs> Did you find right. the carpet very comfortable? I don't think they're actually back. Oh, right. oh, oh, there, oh. sort of, almost. Fuck. Oh, I think. Oh. God, oh. I lost visual. Oh, oh you're like me. Okay. My cable is so. <laughs> Oh, well, there's one. Watch your f- oh, mouth. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, there's Colton over there. Look at Poor Colton. <laughs> I had to do that. Colton. That's a good joke. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> no, just look at Colton. He just looks at us and is like, I gotta work with these f***ing morons. That- more work, more, more, <laughs> more bleeps, more bleeps you gotta put in in the edit, you know? Just do like Riku as one of our cuss words, like bleeps. <laughs> oh no, oh, oh no, oh no. You have a new lap mate. You got a new lap mate. Oh, Look at Ooh, this. It's a nice lap puppy you got there. Oh god, oh. Ass for days. Uh, uh, on second thought. Oh, oh. <laughs> All right. Oh, I think he went to go fix his uh, camera, so he'll be right back. Okay, okay but we can fine. continue on with this. <laughs> okay, All right, I got so. <laughs> All right, so he'll be back. So, how did you get into the gaming in- industry, and why art? Very, very good. Um, ever since I was little, I used to always love video games. Uh, I, I grew up with. I don't know how far to go back here, but I had an issue, according to my like first grade teacher, uh, who said that I had um, an issue with my hand-eye coordination. And she actually recommended to my mom, my dad, get him a, a video game system, because uh, um, it'll help him with that. And bless that heckin' teacher, man. It, it got me, well, for better or for worse, health-wise, it got me into video games. So I'm a freaking, you know, couch potato slashing in front of my computer a lot, but it got me into video games and of course sparked my interest in the game industry as a whole like wanting to make it my profession um i played all the way from like my system was the first system was an atari 2600 and i had almost every system in between since um it wasn't until i got into uh i, I know that you guys have it later in the, in the you know some of the, the the questions you guys have for me but uh with the fur fighter stuff that i've been doing the pixel art um that was also inspired by, by Super Street Fighter 2 Turbo. Like that, as, as many games as I played up to that point, there were a lot of great ones. But that one in particular, when I saw the, the revamp of the portraits in that game, I'm like, that is amazing. I love that art. It inspired me like to take it seriously. Like, I want to start getting into art like more seriously. And that's, of course, when I also try to like get into doing more anthro art and improving my skills. Um... But as far as getting into the actual game industry, that is actually kind of an interesting story to me anyway. I don't know. I think it's pretty cool because this is, this is you know, back in 2004 when they didn't have, uh, back in my day, you know, they didn't have, you know, smartphones and stuff like that. Um, so you had to go on like, and I th- in, in Google Maps, I think it was not even around. I, I had to go on, uh, um, what's it called? MapQuest. Oh, uh, yeah, MapQuest. <laughs> MapQuest, yeah, back then. I had to go on MapQuest, and uh, I, I basically went on websites that I knew of. I think it was like, um, oh god, I forgot the name. I forgot the name of the, the website, but there's a website that had a, a list of a bunch of game studios all across the country. And most of the game studios back then, and I'd say still even today, a lot of them are on the West Coast. And um, unfortunately, at the time, my dad was going through some rough times financially. He allowed me to work from home for a year on a a, uh, a total conversion of a Half-Life 2 game, basically. But times were getting tough, and he's like, here, pack up your stuff. We're going to go take a road trip in your car to California. I lived in Atlanta at the time. From Atlanta to L.A., we drove out there. And he's like, we're going to find you a job. 
and I'm going to be out there with you for two weeks. After that, you're on your own. And I was probably like 21 years old or something like that. I was freaking out. I was so nervous. Um, but I found like about a dozen or so different game studios that were out there. And I, at the time, I think, I don't think I, I might've had a digital portfolio, but I even went the extra mile. I printed out a whole bunch of resumes, put them in like a, a nice kind of blue envelope to hand off to these places. On top of that, I put my digital portfolio on a little small disc, a little CD that they could open up and like a nice presentation so they can open up, put it in the computer and take a look at it. Didn't need to do all that. I even put like a fancy label on it and everything. I'm like, I gotta, I gotta like kind of impress here, you know? Um, so we went door to door to different game studios and it wasn't until maybe like the second to last studio because either these studios they rejected me I, I never heard back or they were closed they were missing like the locations in the map they weren't there we couldn't find it but yeah the, the second to last studio was uh kush games they worked on triple a sports titles like mlb at the time mlb 2k 4 5 6 etc uh nhl uh those the same you know 2k 4 5 6 etc um I, I knocked on their door and I'm like, you know what? Because they actually remembered me from when I applied like months ago, like virtually. And I never heard from them. And the art, art director's like, I remember you. And he's like, all right, come on over here. I sat down and took an art test working on a, uh, it was a, uh, I think like a chicken mascot, uh, like 3D, 3D texture. They wanted me to make it from scratch. And he actually asked me, he's like, would you, you want to use a, a Wacom tablet or whatever? I guess they call Wacom, whatever, Wacom tablet. I call it Wacom. That's me. Um, and I said, I, I've never owned one before. I'm used to work, working with a mouse. He's like, that is insane. But if that's what you're used to, go ahead. And I had two hours to work on re creating this texture with a bunch of reference and everything. And then after the test was done, I was called into the, the uh, you know CEO's office. He's like, we can give you an internship, but hey, we don't F around here, basically, you know. Uh, this is your chance to prove yourself. You got yourself in the door. There you go. So that's kind of how I got in the game industry and never looked back. So, yeah. Hmm. But art, by the way, art has always been my thing. I just, I just love art. I, can't, I could never do like engineering, like programming. Couldn't do it. No, programming seems to be on a different level. Like, because I know what programming does is just codes and stuff. And I've watched some people on YouTube like do coding and I'm like... This is just like numbers put together in a certain pattern, and I have no idea how it works. <laughs> Same. Hmm. Uh, I'm curious, like, I, what are the few companies that, like, didn't, like, call back, if I may ask, if you're comfortable answering that one? Um, <laughs> you know, I, I, uh, <laughs> I, I kind of wish I kept the, the stack of papers just to reference it, you know? Um, but one, I think, in particular, that I remember... One of the cool things about going to door to door to door is like sometimes I mean you actually got in like as far as they would you can get a little peek in you know and I, I'm pretty sure I, I'm trying to remember if this is true or not but I remember seeing an eyeball so I, I can't remember if it was NeverSoft or not if they were around back then. I'm pretty sure I, they, they were oh NeverSoft NeverSoft like Tony Hawk they did Tony Hawk Tony Hawk Underground Tony Hawk and Underground. Get Hero and Get Our Hero. Yeah, so I think that that was one of the studios I went to. Um, I, oh, and I, I went to 2K as well, uh, down in Carlsbad. And that's a game between LA and uh, San Diego. I like how you I say, you're saying the most. E, well, <laughs> yeah, EA back yeah, then. Here's the thing EA back in the day were actually good. I mean, <laughs> we know how they are now. That's all I can say. Before the, it's probably before a good the thing. Before the debacle with the, yeah, with, the pro, with the programmer's wife thing, that debacle that happened like years ago. Where they were yeah, like overworking well, their employees, all that stuff. See, that all came out. I'm, I'm kind of glad you didn't go to, uh, like, even though Activision and Blizzard were, like, the kings at the time, they have just, like, dropped off so much now. Like, I everyone still, knows who they are, but sad. in a bad light. That's sad. I still it think is. Uh, Bethesda is up there still. They, <laughs> Your thing is, yeah, they're having to rekindle their uh, reputation, too, because of Fallout 76, let's be honest. Yeah, I feel like right now, for... pretty, aren't they? Hmm? They're still supporting it, right? Fallout seventy six. Uh, they are. I don't know. Are, they're fixing it. Seeing as they're doing the thing that uh, you know, uh, No Man's Sky did. I can't remember what their name is. I can't remember what their studio name is. God. But the people who worked on No Man's Sky, how it came out in this 
self-destructive mess and they've just kept updating over the years and now honestly as a studio they have like the utmost respect from at least everyone because they consistently and consistently work on it without making no uh no microtransactions and you haven't don't have to pay for any dlc and, and you have free vr update which is another game of its own self honestly <laughs> yeah that's, that's a lot of work. I'm actually surprised how these companies can do this because I, I, sorry, I don't want to get off, off topic here too much, but um, I've worked at plenty of studios in the past. And I, like, there's this new game that came out, um, Video Horror Society, VHS. I don't know if you guys heard of, heard about it. Ooh, I like but that name though. It's, yeah, it's like a competitor to uh, Dead by Daylight, basically asymmetrical horror. And I love the game. I love the game so much, uh, uh, but I'm worried for it because it's 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 got an uphill battle they haven't really done any major advertising for it yet and i've worked at plenty of studios where they've done that they almost ex- at least some of the studios i've worked at they expect like lightning in a bottle and they expect like you know word of mouth to really help with the with the game and that just does not you, you, it's lightning in a bottle for a reason you know it, it's really hard to do you can't rely on that so um i, I i'm worried yeah about some some game studios that do that, oh. do that that they have to abandon I was gonna say after stream, I might have to get that from you. How competitive yeah, sure. is how competitive is it to work at the gaming industry at a place like Riot Games? Um, was what is the work environment like for the gaming industry? It can be very competitive for sure. I mean, you know. That story I just told about how I got my first job. Even the CEO said he's, he's after I worked there for three years. He's like to this day. We still have never hired anyone like we we did with you. And I was like, I was blown away by that. So, uh, but you you have I think now more than ever too because a lot of people keep growing up with video games. Yeah, I mean you see more and more video games out there, but there so there are more jobs, but there are it's still very competitive. And there there are some jobs like even for me being a UI designer, I went that I originally wanted to be a more of a 3D artist. I, that's how I broke in was getting into more like like I said tech, like 3D texturing stuff like that but after a year of, of working on these they were like player likenesses baseball player heads it got boring and I'm like I don't want this because I was not exciting um, so the art director was looking for someone to help out with uh, UI art I said look you teach me teach me the ropes I got you covered um, and that's like I said you know UI art at least back then not as many people wanted to do it it didn't seem as glamorous of a job so, um, but there's a lot of job security. If you're good at what you do in it, you'll be okay. Um, but I think that the more kind of competitive part of game development from an art standpoint, definitely like concept art, um, modelers, and of course, the game, the bar has been set so much higher now with, the, with modern technology. Like you got to be not just knowledgeable in like ZBrush and stuff like that, but you got to be good. You got to be really good at, at sculpting, especially when you do like more realistic stuff. So, um, yeah. it's, 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 <laughs> it's very, like. yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's extremely competitive, right? Um, yeah. even when you're, when you're working in the studio, you, it's, you're not, you can't just slack off. You gotta, you gotta keep performing and, and prove that you, you are there for a reason, you know, even though they might yeah. claim, you know, you are here because you're good. Well, yeah, that's true, but it's still, what have you done for me lately at times, you know? Are you so, saying that it's sometimes cutthroat? Oh, in, in, I mean, not. I haven't experienced that much myself in the game industry, but I've definitely heard. I've seen it more like secondhand. Uh, I just don't. Like, I don't. I don't like playing those games. I, just, I don't like it at all. I avoid that kind of drama. I, I have enough drama in my life. I don't need more of it. You know, I don't like stirring the pot yeah. and kissing butt to try and get ahead. Like, if, I'll let my work speak for it itself. Like, if if I'm performing and doing well, then here, there you go. Like, give me a promotion if you want me to. If you want me to have it and all that. As long as I'm, you know, I keep getting raises and all that stuff, I'm, I'm pretty good. You know, I'm pretty solid. But some people will, they, they do want to climb that ladder faster and they will do probably some pretty gross things to achieve whatever they want. I think it's common in like pretty any, any, any kind of like industry, you know? Yeah, but I'll say like mm-hmm. that's common across any kind of industry at this point because you keep hearing it from like, I know you get it from the gaming industry, but you also get it from like uh, law firms and get it from hospitals and all that stuff. Can't remember what they're from, whatever like, what whatever kind of business you're doing or career. There's always going to be cutthroat people. No yeah, what, there's going to be people out there yeah. who will want to cheat. They want to make it their way up faster, so they'll do something disgusting for it and not look back at it. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the another thing though, I do work in an area where I work in the construction area uh, industry, and like you can kiss ass as much as you want. Once you reach like a certain level, there's nothing more you can do about it. So it depends on where you work. It could be like like having to deal with people that try to climb on top of you. That must be really annoying. I don't I don't personally go through that stuff, but it must be like kind of annoying. I don't know where I'm going with this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I no, no, forgot. I, I, I... Uh, especially if you if you can see right through them, you know, like that is one of the most yeah. frustrating things. Yeah, me. you you see what the little um, game they're playing, what they're trying to do. It's yeah. like, oh, it's aggravating. I feel lucky I'm because sure I don't have to deal with that. A couple of coworkers that probably have done that to other people. I'm, of course, you're yeah. not gonna name them, but I'm pretty sure you've I've, seen it. <laughs> at least once I have, and, and surprisingly, it, it's it's more related to my 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 area like uh, which is art you know because with art it's a little bit different unless you're getting into more managerial type stuff I mean, with art it's, it's different because it's like like i said your your work speaks for itself like you're going to get promoted based on your, your the quality of work that you do um but things start changing a little bit once you start going into management if you want to take that path personally I'd, I'd rather not it just doesn't appeal to me um i don't mind managing or like you know helping ramp up you know more junior level artists that's fine but uh i i, just, I don't want to I don't, I don't want to be stuck under under paperwork and trying to kiss the right booty you know what i'm saying <laughs> and i just yeah it's not for me what uh, yeah. what okay on a positive note what has been one of the most memorable moments so far working in the game industry definitely it's that that one moment that i've already hinted at when that first job that i got it was the first job that i got at Kush Games, uh, they're not around anymore. They got bought out by 2K, uh, and later that CEO went on to open up a place called Zindigi Games. I don't know if they're still around either or not. Uh, they may have been. They, they were working on some like um, what, what was it? The, the, the Sony Sony Move, right? I think that's what it was called years ago. They they made like the the, the prepackaged game that came with the Sony Move. So they made they made bank off that. I mean, I think to the point where my that former art director that I mentioned, I'm getting off ta- off topic here. I think he was like driving around in some like a fancy Corvette or Porsche or something like that. I don't know, but they you, you can make some good money in this in this game in, in the game industry for sure. But um, back to my story, I, it was just it, it was walking out of that place out of Kush Games uh, with that job. I, I felt like I, I was on cloud nine. I mean, it was still one of the most memorable, and how I achieved it by going door to door like that, just coming out of there with jobs, like it, it was a sense of validation. Like, okay, this is it. Even though I still have to prove myself to this company, mm. um, it, it just it, it, an amazing feeling. And, uh, mm. and even though, even though you know, Riot Games, like they're they're very rigorous with their interview process. I mean, my process wasn't as bad because they really needed. They, they were trying to get Valorant out the out the door, and they needed people to help out. People who were experienced with like shipping games and stuff. Um, so it, it was still maybe about a three to four week process for me. But you know, it could take months to get hired by Riot. Um, and even though I got that job, I'm, I'm telling you. I'm telling you that that first experience getting that job was the pinnacle for me uh, as far as like feeling the good vibes, you know. Okay. So why, so does, why does nothing... it take so long to recruit people? Is it because they have a lot of question? They do background checks. They ask your previous job. They ask for portfolios. Why does it take so long? It's it's that it's very exhaustive with them. I mean, they they do definitely. They have like. I was because there uh, there are some places I've interviewed where it, it was like you know softball toss kind of questions and they, they kind of it's more it's almost like it was, it's with some with some companies when you get flown out or whatever they interview you on, interview you on site it's almost like a formality like they're just like oh this one's make sure your your personality is good and all that and that you're a good fit um, culturally uh, and, and I mean that that's true as well with Riot but they still put you through the ringer there. Uh, and I don't, I don't blame them. I think, I think it's also because they have that luxury. The fact that they are a big studio, like a huge freaking company, you know, uh, with so many different, uh, sister satellite studios and one coming here to Seattle, for instance, um, they, they, they literally have their pick so they can, and, and they're, and they're making, they're making good money. So they, they can, they can have their pick of the litter basically. And they want to make absolutely sure that the people that they bring in are, you know, good cultural fits that they, um, uh, you know, are cream of the crop, you know, artists, engineers, take any profession. 
Yeah, basically, that, that's all it is. So, <laughs> yeah, versus, you know, more indie studios, if they vibe with you, they like your art style, you're, you're hired for that specific reason, you might go in for one interview and get a job offer before you leave. It just varies. All right. For anyone who would want to get into the gaming industry as an artist, would you, what would you recommend to them? So you could always go this route. I'll, I'll never stop thanking my, my friend from back in the day. Uh, I, I was at a, a weird position. Like I said, I was working. We were working on the, uh, it was a World War II um, total conversion for half on the Half-Life 2 engine. So we're taking the Half-Life engine and then just repurposing it to be a World War II uh, simulation game, basically. Uh, or like hard, there's a hardcore, you know, uh, experience, basically. And... Um, but he urged me to, to do that, to like work on 3D modeling, animation, and stuff like that, to help build portfolio pieces. I, I, that even never even occurred to me. Like I'm the one applying or you know trying to get into this industry, and he's the one giving me advice. I was like, what? Well, that was that was outstanding advice. So always, especially if you're an artist, always always work on your content, build up your portfolio, make sure too if you're you want to do character art. I hate to say this for the furry fandom, but you got to get some like non furry stuff in there. I'm telling you, because I I don't. It's not going to help your chances uh, getting in the game industry if you have it's, only furry stuff. I it's guarantee good that you it. can draw anthropomorphic characteristics, but you also need to draw humanoids. Exactly. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah. Not, I mean furry, furry. <laughs> stuff is a very small community. You need to like it's a small thing. You need to have variety, of course. Yep. Oh, yeah, exactly. Definitely. And, but yeah, outside of that, I'd say if you want to do proper schooling, go for it. I, but again, and, and for certain for certain backgrounds, like if you want to be an engineer, again, you've got to go to school. You have to. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, you can teach yourself, but I, I don't know. I don't know if you can get away with just here are three games I put on iPhone and or you know whatever or an Unreal Engine. I, I built this little project. Check it out. That kind of thing. I, I don't know. Maybe you can get away with that. Um, I think with art, you're, you do have a chance of that. But I know that game studios also look to see how good you are with collaboration, too. So doing side projects, going also to school, see how much you can um, deal with learning, basically, and being in those, in those team environments um, tells more about you. So, yeah. It's pretty much it sounds like it's a full-time job before a full-time job. In a way, yeah. I mean, and, and it depends on where you go to school too. Like, um, I went to University of Georgia, so like, you know, back then in like the early two thousands, it was a oh, very, really? very yeah. I went, to, yeah, University you went of Georgia. UGA. Yep. Colton went to UGA. Oh really? Oh my God, go yeah, dogs! I oh, wait, that's right. That's, also, that's, oh, that's right. That's right. You also live oh, in. You also lived in Atlanta. Okay, that's yeah, right. Yeah, I was. That's yeah, yeah, both yeah. my group together. Wow. Jeez, this is why. This is why you yeah. vibe together. My this world. is why. That's the reason. I used to. I used to, I used to live in. Uh, I don't know if they're still there anymore. But I used to live in uh, Creswell Hall and uh, Reed Hall. <gasps> yes. Their dorms. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> that's crazy. Yeah, oh my god. Get out. Yeah. <laughs> that's adorable. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> that was awesome. I might, I might have an That's action little, actually. Funny. When you're a UI action. artist, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing you must be working a lot of people. Like you need to set like a system of communication. What do you guys use to be able to communicate between teams and stuff? Yeah, so we use more for like. It does, of course, there's email, uh, but for like text-based interactions, you have uh, Slack, and that's kind of like oh, yeah. a, you know instant messenger services. That, but then we also use Google Hangouts too. Google Hangouts and Zoom, a whole bunch of different things. So for like the larger uh, team meetings or like presentations from like the you know more company-wide stuff, they'll they'll use like Zoom or something like that. Um, for more team-based stuff, uh, like daily stand-ups and stuff like that, we'll use like Google Hangouts. Um, and then again, like you can still do like one on ones and stuff like that uh, in Slack. The, the problem with Slack is you can't do video calls. But the nice uh, thing about Slack, the nice thing, I wish everyone implemented this. They have a pen tool. So when we are talking and doing a screen share, you can do screen shares at least. And you're showing me your screen. I'm like, whoa, whoa wait, no, no, it's not, it's not here in the hierarchy. You got to go over here. Let's grab my little pen tool and circle it. Like, this is where you want to go. So you get to see exactly and it where it shows I'm on their screen. Yes. Yep. Oh, that it's is so cool. cool. 
Oh my god, I wish I could use that for your clients. <laughs> yeah, I want, I want Hangouts, oh, I want Discord, great. everything's got to have that, man. It's such a good tool. I, gotta, I wanted to, before I get to my next point, I wanted to ask a quick question, and then maybe it's something that you can answer. So a lot of gaming users who play, or that are really high for games based on trailers, um, they the graphics looks great on the trailers, but it ends up being a uh, low budget. Why do gaming companies do that sometimes? They hype it up to that extreme, but then they just put low budgets. Kind of makes them think of Metal Gear Solid PlayStation One. 